Welcome back to the Girl Fry Back Podcast. It is your host, Tiana. I know it's been a while, but we're about to get into it. We're not even going to go through the I'm sorry. It's because I am. Don't get me wrong. I am. But this is part of this week's or this episode. So let's just jump into it. I hope all of you guys have been wonderful. I hope the Lord has been keeping you guys. I hope you guys have been great mentally and emotionally and spiritually and financially and all the things. So we are going to talk about the freedom of truth, specifically the freedom of my own truth. Um, so I would like to first say your girl got the flu. Oh my goodness. Your girl was down bad for about a week and a half. It was terrible. It was absolutely horrible. And while I was figuring out everything and while I was figuring out everything that I wanted to do with this podcast and the direction that I wanted to take it in and just what the mission and the purpose and the vision for this podcast was, I came down with the flu. And I would usually in the past, I would have just blamed the flu of why I've been gone for so long, why I've been absent why I haven't recorded because I am still dealing with a lingering cough I'm still dealing with those last little effects but the fever's gone all those things your girl's been healed hallelujah however I'm not going to use the flu as an excuse because if I'm living in the freedom of my truth imposter syndrome was the true reason why I haven't recorded the true reason why I haven't been consistent because I created a podcast that I want to encourage other women and young ladies and people in general to fight back and to reclaim what is theirs and to fight back for what is theirs, whether they've had it in the past or not, to fight back for your peace and your wholeness and your healing and all of these things. But right now in my life, I am going through some of the toughest times emotionally, mentally, financially, and all of the things. And I feel like I'm being an imposter. Because how am I going to encourage other people to fight back when I have zero fight left in me? When I have zero, like, will to fight for myself. But I feel like while I had the flu and while I was down, I was able to mentally reset and mentally just think for a little bit. And I had doubts and I had just reservations and like I said, imposter syndrome, but I also got revelation and clarification and insight on exactly why I am supposed to be the host of this podcast and why I am supposed to help others and speak on my story to help others fight back. And the reason is because I would not go to a doctor if they've never been to school and gone through that process. I wouldn't ask someone advice on how to save a thousand dollars if they've never gone through the process. I would, I would never ask someone advice on how to lose 10 pounds if they've never gone through the process of losing 10 pounds and one thing that I've noticed with social media and with just everything on the internet is a lot of people want to show their end story and not the process and the process is the important part the end result of course that's good that's glamorous you're healed you're whole you're at peace 
you've won your fight but the process of it that is the truth because the truth is this hurts the truth is I'm fighting for my life the truth is I'm literally having to wake up every day and choose to have a good one in order to fight back for my peace every day has been a different struggle or a different obstacle or a different task or something that I've had to fight back for and it's easy to find excuses and finding excuses for me prevents me from being disappointed finding excuses like oh you had the flu take a month off a month off that's wild you know how many people work with the flu and of course I didn't have a voice so in that process of course I can't record a podcast when you don't have a voice but once you start getting a voice and and you get back on your feet you need to get back to work but finding excuses prevented me from being in my truth and my truth is not pretty my truth is not aesthetically pleasing my truth is I'm doing my very damaged hair in my bathroom right now if you're watching this on YouTube and I'm having to make it work with the few items that I do have in order to get my hair looking somewhat decent because your girl was out here looking rough and I do mean rough and even after I'm done doing my hair it's still not to the aesthetically pleasing um I guess expectations that society has for us that I even have for myself but it's something it's a process it's a step it's a step in the right direction I did my hair but right now not being at my best every day feels like I'm not qualified however me not being at my best and me taking myself and you guys through this process of me not being at my best and living in my truth of what is now versus what we're going to see because I'm claiming that right now in the future of me being healed and being whole and being at peace and winning my fight I feel like that's more important I feel like the process and documenting the process is more important than just waiting until I feel like I'm not an imposter going through the process and doing it anyways instead of waiting until I feel like I've accomplished whatever it is that I need to accomplish and I found this peace in this understanding in this ultimate life goal of just everything that I want right and also just unlearning negative mindsets because when I say I am my biggest enemy when it comes to negative mindsets it is terrible y'all like absolutely horrible I can go into a deep dive of negativity and snuggle up there with a blanket and a warm heater and I can live there if I wanted to like it is it's cozy I don't know why and that is something that I'm working on in therapy and with my daily devotions with the Lord and just a lot of different areas that I'm working on right now. So I am unlearning some negative mindsets. I'm learning new things and I'm unlearning new things. And this is again, just my truth. It is not pretty again. It is not aesthetically pleasing as most people would want it to look as social media makes it look like right now but going through the process I feel like that is what's going to really make the difference for me in my healing journey it is really going to make the difference for me in making sure that I'm taking the proper steps in getting to the destination and not 
faking it and not there's a saying that God doesn't heal the fake you he only heals the real you he can't heal fake you because fake you isn't hurting as bad fake you isn't as depressed or as broken or as in need as the real you and the real you is the person who needs the help and I was afraid of my truth I was afraid of what will people think of me what will my family think what who so what will I think my truth is ugly Ooh, <clears throat> it is who y'all my truth is so not pretty it's so not pretty but nobody's truth is nobody's truth is all rainbows and sunshine and Disney World nobody's truth is and that's okay it's not meant to be I think more people will get healing and resonate with the struggle and the truth and the rawness of the process than people who oh you're just put together oh you just have it all going on Oh, you're just, you're that person. You're that girl. You're that guy. And sometimes, yes, that's what we need to see. We need to see that there's an end result. But most of the time, most of the people, we need to see the process. Because that's great that you have a million dollars. That's great that you're married. That's great that you started the business. But what was the process of it? How do I get there? How do I get there when I don't feel like doing it? How do I get there when I don't feel like I'm qualified to do it? How do I get there when my mind is telling me that I can't do it? When I don't have the speaking skills or the speaking background. I don't come from a wealthy family that supports me. I don't come from a family that supports me even if they weren't wealthy I don't come from a a family where I've seen a healthy marriage or I I don't come from where I've seen people raise their kids and everybody's been in foster care like all these different things that people actually struggle with every day like seeing the truth will help set them free quicker than any end result will And I think that is what is missing in a lot of today's society. And I am scared, y'all. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I am like terrified to put my truth out there. And that's because I'll be judged. I'll be ridiculed by some. I'll be judged by others. I'll be teased and all these things. And what happens if I'm not supported? What happens if I do all of these things and I put myself out there and I fail? What happens then? Like, those are the things that run through my mind all day, every day. But I have to remember, I'm not looking for validation from anyone else. I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I know what I'm what I'm going towards. I know what I'm building towards. I know what I'm working towards. So if no one listens to this podcast, if no one watches the videos, if I don't have weekly listeners and I don't grow an audience and nothing works, I know this healing journey for me will. I know emotionally I'll be better. I know spiritually I'll be better. I know financially I'll be better. I know that at the end of the day, I will have fought back for myself and that end result will be better than what is currently happening right now. And that notion that understanding that focus that mindset 
it's what's going to get me to keep coming back, to keep recording, to do it even when I don't feel like it, to do it even when I feel like I'm not qualified, to do it even when I look a hot mess. Have y'all ever done something and it looked a hot mess, but you did it anyways because it needed to be done, whether it be for you or for someone else? And one thing that I've been listening to and and hearing in different podcasts that I follow and different sermons that I've listened to is that sometimes God is waiting for you to step into your purpose because your purpose is attached to other people's purposes. What if I don't start this podcast and someone else doesn't get their blessing? Somebody else doesn't get healed. Then what do I look like when the good Lord does return and I've been sitting on my behind and he's just like, well, there were 20 people that were waiting on you to do what you needed to do. And now they don't have what they needed to have. And now they're stuck too. I've sat there and ruined to 20 other people's lives. I think not, not to mention I'm a mother being healed for not just myself, but for my child is vital. Do you understand me? Because I am creating childhood memories for him. And I don't want him to see all the time that his mom is just struggling and depressed and sad. Like that's not the type of memories that I want my son to look back on. And that's not the type of memories that I myself want to look back on when I'm 40 and 50 and 60 years old that I was just so darn sad when I was 30 like that's not what I want to do and yes storms come and struggles and 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 hardships come I'm not saying you're not going to go through anything and I'm not and I'm not expecting that I'll just have peaches and cream and rainbows all the time however I do want to consciously create peace and stability and a happy life for myself and my son so as we end this episode right now I'm learning that my flaws qualify me the 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 flaws that are so ugly and so unesthetically pleasing those are what qualify me to fight back to to start this podcast to do the things regardless of how they look so learning to love my flaws and to grow from them and to create better habits and things of that nature but learning that my flaws qualify me and also something as simple as showing up as myself I don't need to be anybody else I don't need to try to be anybody else I don't need to go and copy someone else's style someone else's methods I don't need to do that I need to be unapologetically myself because again I'm not going to get healed trying to be someone else if I act like my best friend I'm not going to get healed my best friend might but that don't help me I mean me having my help my best friend healed does help but you get what I'm saying guys So please just take a moment today as you listen to this and just reflect on the freedom of your truth. It may be ugly, y'all. I'm not saying it's pretty. But when I tell you there's freedom in your truth, then you can start fighting back. So tune back into next week's episode. Bye, y'all.